all kinds of things from the Cleveland Botanical Garden, the videotape of the show you're watching this afternoon, and the Cleveland Garden Handbook that we were just reading some information about, about pests and predators, all for a $180 pledge to WVIZ. And you know Julie Henry from WVIZ PBS and Jeremy Bishko from the Cleveland Botanical Garden are standing by over in the Garden Center, and they tell us it's just about time to go over and be meet their next guest. Well, they have so many good things this afternoon. So many good things, and we have good things for you here also. The phones are open during the entire show, so make that pledge. We're waiting to hear from you. Well, for most of us, there's nothing more satisfying as a gardener than growing your own vegetables, bringing them in the house, and then enjoying them. And right now, Angelo Petiti from Petiti Garden Centers is back with us to tell us how to plan and to plant our own vegetable gardens, right? Yes. Uh, I think uh, planning uh, of the garden is one of the most important things, uh, especially if you never had one. Uh, you should really take the time to plan the space where you want to put it in, how big. First of all, don't start with too big, because sometimes by starting with too big of a, <coughs> with a, uh, too big of a garden, it's going to you, it's going to be way too much work. So you're much better off think small and then work from there. Uh, if you never had a garden, the first thing that I would do is make sure that you pick out a nice sunny location. Uh, you need at least six to seven hours of sunlight. Uh, you don't want to plant a garden in a, in a wet area. It needs to be in a dry area, uh, some places it drains well. Uh, if you have any problems with, if you definitely want to put it in, in, in a certain spot and there's too much moisture there, you should raise your bed at least eight to ten inches. Uh, these are some of the key requirements as far as placing a garden. How much uh, space do you need? What if you have a very small yard? Could you still grow vegetables? Sure you could. Yeah, I, you know, Even in a four foot by four foot, you can grow quite a bit. Okay. Uh, and something so, Angelo touched on was the fact like a raised bed. Um, while it increases the drainage, it's great for someone older than myself who might have some mobility issues. Um, and you have foot-high planks that are filled with your soil, um, so it's much less leaning over. <clears throat> and because the soil is so much looser in that raised bed, you can almost grow it um, more space intensive, so you can get more crops in a given area. Okay. And, and another thing that you can do is you can also plan your crops a little bit better. For example, if you're putting in uh, lettuce and tomatoes and uh, onions, you can kind of uh, space those out in a way that you don't have them all at one time. Uh, one of the ideas that I've used quite a bit is that when you sow your seeds, instead of sowing your seed in, in little plugs where you have kind of a short time to, to plant them, you can use a deep pot. By using a deep pot, what that does is as your seedlings come up, you really have about almost four to five weeks to plant. So what happens on a weekly basis, you can go ahead and plant a few, and then next week you plant a few more, that allows you to manage your space much, much better. Uh, same thing with onions. Like uh, if you like uh, scallions or if you like the, uh, uh, you know, the bulbs, just get some that you put in your refrigerator, keep them there cool, and then on a weekly basis, go ahead and plant a few and then you'll have them coming out constantly. If Instead you, of just a big right. bushel full and you don't know what to exactly. do with all of them. Yeah. Scheduling that, is really that, important because a lot of your early spring crops like lettuces and radishes, you can plant out early and plant them every week so you can always come along and cut your lettuce, it'll grow again. You have constant in certain crops, your cold crops like cauliflower or broccoli, which are a little hardier, you can put out maybe before even the last frost. Um, so those have a head start in your garden. And, you know, just like Jeremy said, you know, by by scheduling, you know, if you cut your lettuce, so if you have, if you plant one, three weeks in a row, by the time you're cutting your third set, your first set that you already cut comes right back. So that just allows you the time to, you know, to, you know, to just go ahead and manage that space better. Another, you know, another thing that you can do is uh, even in a small pot like this, which is uh, probably about an 18 or 20 inch pot, you can plant a tomato in there. You can plant. Uh, uh, herbs, you can plant some lattices around, you can plant all different things around it, and that would give you plenty of space to do it in. And mescaline you, mixtures are really popular, I think, in restaurants, very gourmet type um, shopping places, and it's so easy just to buy mescaline mix and sow that yourself, and every week you have fresh, fresh exactly, mescaline that you can exactly. eat. Exactly, and, and you, there's just a, a lot of different ways to, you know, even a window box uh, can, you know, if you take like a two, uh, two foot by 12 inch window box, you can have uh, enough lettuce and enough uh, herbs in there to just keep on cutting on a weekly basis. And if you have two of them, use one while the other one grows, and then the other one comes back later. So you can really use uh, a lot of uh, the uh, you know those ideas to to just keep 
a lot of vegetables in a small space. The next thing is, you know, you really need to get the soil preparation. You want to make sure that if you have grass there, remove the grass off of it. And you should really raise the bed. You should, the bed should be at least uh, five to six inches above your grass level. Oh, okay. Um, you can use any kind of, uh, as far as to hold the soil in, you can use either uh, uh, stone, you can use blocks, you can use timber. Uh, be careful when you use the, uh, uh, the treated timber. Uh, you really don't want to put the vegetables right next to that. You, you, know, you may want to put a, a little plastic uh, around it so it doesn't leach into the garden. Uh, but being a, having the bed raised up a little bit, that really provides you drainage, and it also uh, it dries out a little bit better, more aer aeration. So uh, another thing that you want to make sure that you use a lot of is compost, especially the first time you want to use like on a 50-50 basis. Oh, wow. So that you really work it in really well. And from then on, you know, every year you add a little bit more to it. And that, you know, getting the soil uh, t to stay nice and loose and, and airy is really very important. I think diversity is really important, too, that you just don't plant a whole strip of tomatoes, but you can intersperse some basil, maybe some marigolds and other herbs. Um, so a lot of the insects can key in on the smell of a certain plant, and that's how they find it. So if you have other things in there, it kind of discourages them, and they're not going to be able to find it. And so... One, you have a beautiful garden, it's very diverse, and you're going to have less pest problems. And another thing, you know, the tomatoes, uh, especially all these new varieties, they produce so much fruit that you really don't need that many plants. If you put uh, two or three or four plants for an average family, it's really more than enough. Uh, give them enough space, you really need about three feet in between them, uh, especially if you're using like Better Boy or some of the uh, bigger tomatoes like uh, Supersonic or Celebrity. Those are tomatoes that, you know, they get to be four or five feet tall, about two, two and a half feet in width. And the more light they have, the more they will produce. And so there's no reason to really cram them in. Uh, that, that will also allow you to have some space. On tomatoes, another thing that I found out that instead of planting all your tomatoes out of in the spring, like, you know, uh, middle mm -hmm. of May or the end of May, it's always a good idea to leave a little spot to plant some about the end of June, early July. And what that does, it gives you a very late crop that you can enjoy at the end of September versus the other plants are just about done. So these are some of the ideas that, uh, you know, that you can use. I also love around the garden, I really like to have flowers and like the, I like the whole border to be in flowers and uh, herbs. That really gives the aroma, it gives it a nice special place to go to that you can cut some flowers, pick mm -hmm. some vegetables, bring some flowers in. And the varieties that I would use would all be varieties to, that you would use for cutting. Uh, dahlias are gorgeous, uh, daisies, uh, and just mix all the herbs right in between. You can make beautiful uh, bouquets and uh, take vegetables in with some flowers. Can in. you talk about tomatoes a little bit? Because we try to plant these every year. We have horrible luck probably planting about four of them in a four foot square area and then blossom and rot every single year. We, we don't get much of anything. Well, the, uh, the, uh, one of the things that I would do is uh, the blossom and rot is really due to too much crowding. You really uh. need the space. You can't, you know, you have to allow plenty of space between the plants because if the air circulation isn't, isn't enough there, that's how all the diseases set in. Uh, another thing with tomatoes, you really want to make sure that when it comes the end of June, uh, you do put about a tablespoon of calcium right around the base. Uh, the, uh, the end rot of the tomato is caused by lack of calcium. So it's something that instead of waiting to find out if you're going to have it or not, you're just much better it. off prevented. You can even use just eggshells from your kitchen and grind those up and yeah, that, side dress it and put it along the side of each tomato, and that's a great way to help. Yeah, that the works very well. But uh, the once it's there, uh, you're not going to take fix it anymore. So you, it's something that you really need to, to think you know ahead of time. Another thing that I like to I like to use organic fertilizer in the soil, uh, plant tone and ironite. Uh, these are great products that you can work into the soil. Uh, before they work, you even plant? Before you plant, mm -hmm. just mix it right in there. While you're planting the seedlings, miracle Grow is a great thing to use for about two weeks. That will feed the plants while they're sending the roots out. Once the roots are out, then the, the uh, plant tone and ironite will take, will take over from there. Uh, and every, maybe like in the summertime, dress them out a couple more times, very likely. Uh, I like organics, but they don't burn. They're very slow. They really give what the plants need. And I kind of avoid using uh, chemicals on them. Because I found with the organics, like it just improves the quality of your soil. So the next season when you come along, your soil's a little bit better. Uh, and you just keep going through that process. Yeah. Another thing that uh, when you're sowing seed, uh, by using a mister, if you use, if you get, um, if you make a chamomile tea, mm -hmm. uh, 
chamomile tea will prevent all the uh, the rotting on your uh, on your oh. seed. Or sometimes they come up and you lose quite a few of them there uh, as they're germinating by you. Uh, you know, uh, misting them with that, that will prevent that uh, from happening. It's actually a natural uh, fungicide that will actually help... Uh, prevent the dampening off yeah, of your seedlings. Exactly. Oh, great tip. Exactly. Well, Angelo Petiti, thanks for being with us and sharing oh, those you. tips. More to come, so stay with us. You know, Maureen, we said it before, but I need to say it again. We couldn't have done this program without the support of Angelo Petiti. He's been so gracious to be on the show and have done several segments with us, but just about everything that you see growing in the studio or used for any of the demonstrations came from the greenhouses of Petiti Garden Centers. And we used to have